Later this market is going to a speculative frenzy, people racking up huge gains in quantum computing stocks, even as the technology is still in its infancy. But maybe it's closer than we think. But I'm not scolding you. I want to take the speculation seriously because maybe it's not that speculative after all. Which brings me to D-Wave Quantum, a stock that's up nearly 2,000% over the past 12 months. I want some of that. Last Thursday, D-Wave reported, honestly, I'm not quite sure what to make of the numbers. I'd rather just play with an open hand. Companies tallying the fact that bookings were up 92% year over year. That's terrific. But like I said, quantum computing is still very early. That's why bookings stood at just $1.3 million. That's an M. Uh, at the same time, the company's losing big money. But, you know, it has big money. So maybe so what? So you can understand why more traditional investors look at this, struggle to justify DUA's more than $6 billion market capitalization, but not me, because I'm open-minded. I want to find out what's going on. If this is a technology whose time has come, then it makes sense. So has quantum computing truly arrived, or has the stock gotten ahead of itself? Let's take a close look with Dr. Alan Barrett. He's the president and CEO of D-Wave to find out. Dr. Barrett, welcome to Mad Money. Thank you. Okay, so I'll tell you the conundrum I have. Uh, I heard, we mentioned that you were coming on. Well, nobody stops me on the way to getting a haircut and never asked me about a stock. I got stopped twice saying, listen, you got to find out about that D-Wave. I made a, and one, one guy said that. The other one said, I made a killing D-Wave. And I said to myself, okay, I, I, I've got to just try to let people understand why you're important, why people pay for you, and why this is now and not 10 years from now. So, Jim, we are quite unique in the quantum industry in the sense that we were the first and are the only quantum computing company that is truly commercial. And by truly commercial, what I mean is we have customers using our systems today as part of their business operations. This is not research experimentation. This is customers using us today as part of their business operations. Companies like NTT Docomo, large cellular firm in Japan. Uh, companies like MasterCard. Okay, talk, because Michael Meebach is someone I know really, really well. And MasterCard can use anybody and has tremendous ability to be able, it's filled with mathematicians. Really quite amazing. Most mathematicians under the roof of any other company. Why do they need you? Yeah. So basically, our quantum computers today are really good at solving hard business optimization problems. These range from workforce scheduling to manufacturing plant floor optimization to protein folding. But one of the types of optimization problems is around optimizing loyalty rewards programs. Oh. So the idea is, how do you decide what programs to offer to what customers to maximize uptake? That's a hard optimization problem. I know that problem. most people think it's intuitive. It's not, right? Definitely not. And the way to make more money would be, can they bring you in to show them? Or is that something, and will they pay you for that? Because I'm trying to figure out, what well, if I could get that, that information, that would be, why not pay you $20 million for that information to get you to really mine it for me? So it's not so much the information, it's the computation. Okay. We're not about big data. What we are about is solving hard computational problems okay. to get to better answers and better outcomes. Okay, so what for GE Vernova, which is a fabulous company that does alternative energy but also natural gas turbines, what kind of outcomes are you trying to find for them? So basically what we are trying to do is help all of our companies improve their business operations. Okay. In, uh, so in the case of uh, G. Vernova or any energy companies, it's all about how do we optimize the grid yes. and how do we make it more reliable? Well, okay, so that is so important to G. Vernova that I, I would think that they would pay you a lot more money than maybe they're paying you now. Is that possible? Uh, absolutely. So we are, as I said, the only commercial quantum computing company, but we are still in the very early stages of commercialization. Okay. So today, we are working with our customers through our professional services team to help them understand which of their applications can most benefit from quantum, right. to help them build out those applications and then ultimately move them into production. As they start moving into production, that's where we will see a significant revenue uptick. Okay, so I am also told at the same time, You've got to ask about, is he going to destroy Bitcoin? Now, can you explain to people why you may or may not be able to destroy Bitcoin? Yeah. So we announced about two months ago that we had, for the first time ever, been able to show that our quantum systems can solve a, an important real-world problem, a useful problem that cannot be solved classically. Now, this happened to be a problem in the area of material simulation, basically computing properties of magnetic materials, which we can do in minutes that can't be done classically even with millions of years. So 
That's a very significant result for the quantum industry. Nobody to date had been able to show that they could solve a useful problem that can't be solved classically. What we were then able to do is take that computation and turn it into what we called a quantum proof of work okay. or blockchain. Okay. The idea being that instead of using uh, the typical computation for Bitcoin, which is SHA-256, what you could do is use this quantum proof of work as the underlying computation for cryptocurrency or other blockchain applications. Why is this significant? Because if blockchain, if Bitcoin today was using this proof of work rather than what they're currently using, we would consume 1,000 times less power. This is a very energy efficient sure, technology. Sure, but the guys from Core we, that's why they got into power. Because exactly. it was they were they were Bitcoin guys. You're, you're, you're absolutely right, and it's not only blockchain and Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. It's also AI. The point is, quantum computers are very energy efficient. Our right. systems are going to be able to perform these computations at a fraction of the power required. Well, okay. Time to short the energy stocks. Well, I was going to say that we do believe that the grid is supposed to go up 4 to 5 percent every year. That will not happen if you get to be yeah. commercial. That's exactly right. Yeah. Well, then we shouldn't be thinking about the demand. We, we've got to be worried about all the money going into energy. Yeah, look, I think that today the assumption is it's still going to be a while before right. quantum gets to the point right. where it can really impact AI. However, I believe that you're going to see it happening much sooner than most people believe because of the technology that we've developed. And, and you're showing me here, is this something that Jensen Wong saw and realized that perhaps he was being too judgmental about? Well, you? I, I don't know if Jensen saw this, but this is our most recent quantum processor. It is a superconducting processor. Uh, it has over a million Josephine junctions. It's like transistors. Right. Uh, over 100 uh, meters of wiring, hundreds of thousands of active devices. This is the largest superconducting chip ever developed. Well, do we need to use cryogenic to cool this? We do run this within a dilution refrigerator at millikelvin temperature. Well, now, Jensen told me that cryogenic is too expensive for him to be using. Why is it okay for you? Well, so because this chip is so much more powerful than GPUs. Think about it this way. That computation that I talked about a minute ago, computing properties of magnetic right. materials, we perform that computation in minutes, consuming about 12 kilowatts of power on this chip. If you were to run it on the largest exascale supercomputers in the world, massively parallel GPU systems, right. it would still take over a million years. So think about how much power and how much cooling you need for those massive oh exascale God, systems no, it's versus much. this one chip. Well, look, I could talk to you for hours, and I think that we're going to have to do a lot with you because our viewers want to hear more about this than anything. And our viewers are smart. And if we think that they're just yahoos that are trying to buy something at 12 and sell to 15, that's selling them short. They're looking for something that for multi years, and it may just be you and your company. So I, I want to thank you so much, doctor. It's it, it, it's incredibly enlightening to be able to talk to you. That's uh, Dr. Barrett's from. And I'll tell you, the, the stuff is actually T Wave. The stuff, the the website is by far so easy. I'm telling you, you'll come back and say, oh, look at this traffic problem that they solved in, in China. Look at the things that they're doing. All real world things, all real world. That money's back after the break. Coming up, as summer travel winds down, Kramer's looking closer at Airbnb and Expedia and sharing which one investors might consider booking a stay in and which one to book profits and go next. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.